we will talk about the Rafale fight jets. The reason is that the first batch of five fighter aircraft, Rafale fighter aircraft, have landed in India in Ambala, in Haryana, as per the schedule. We will try and understand for the next half an hour the not only the specifications or the prowess which these fighter aircraft has, but also how and why they will be utilized for uh, India's uh, defense uh, infrastructure, specifically the kind of boost it will provide to the Indian Air Force. And for more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with, uh, we have Air Vice Marshal P.K. Srivastava. We are also joined by uh, retired Air Marshal Anil Chopra and Manu Pabi, the senior editor of Economic Times, somebody who keeps a tab on uh, all news and aspects related to the defense uh, infrastructure in India. Let me begin with you, uh, Hey, Marshal Anil Chopra, and let's start by putting things in perspective for our viewers. All of us have heard a lot about Rafale fighter jets. So let's start by understanding why was it important for us to have these jets? Uh, firstly, I must say that the entire country uh, and specifically Indian Air Force is very happy to have received the first five aircraft which have just landed uh, a short while earlier. And... Uh, uh, for me personally, it is very nostalgic because in 1985, uh, from the same factory, Bordeaux, uh, I had uh, taken off in the first formation of the Mirage 2000 aircraft and brought uh, the Mirage 2000 aircraft into India, more or less on a similar route, except that instead of landing in Ambala, uh, they landed at their operational base, uh, Gwalia. Uh, and the second difference was that uh, in those days, we did not have uh, air-to-air refueling. And therefore, the number of stops that we had to make and route were much uh, We had to do only a single stop. Uh, there is uh, excitement uh, on many fronts. One reason, of course, is that at this moment, there are war clouds uh, hovering in Ladakh. And uh, therefore, Indian uh, India as a nation wanted improved security. Uh, Indian Air Force particularly uh, it is down to uh, 30 squadrons uh, instead of the approved uh, 42. Uh, for them, uh, it is very important to quickly get uh, new capability. And Rafal, I must tell you, is going to be a, a game changer in this region for many counts. And I will explain uh, uh, one by one, first about the Rafal and second about the Ambala Air Base, where they are going to be positioned. Uh, let mm -hmm. me say a few words. Of, yeah, let me say a few words about uh, Rafal. You know, if you, I'm a test pilot, and I, I, if, you, if you look at the aircraft from nose to the uh, tail, uh, you will find uh, the ISA radar, which is there, which has got a range of over 200 kilometers, is the, is the best ISA that is available in the region. The Chinese and the Pakistanis, they do not have an ISA radar of this class. Then there is this IRST, infrared sensor tracking, over 100 kilometers of range, which is fantastic, uh, you know, kind of range for a sneak attack. Then you come into the cockpit, there is this electronic warfare spectra covering a large portion of the uh, electro, uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, you know, uh, spectrum. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, this is going to be very useful to jam uh, airborne as well as uh, ground radars. And uh, uh, it, it is a big asset in uh, combat. Uh, then come to the weapons, uh, 9.5 tons of weapons, 14 hard points. And what a class of weapons, the meteor, scalp. Uh, and the hammer, which uh, details we will talk about a little later. Uh, uh, I will just give you a macro you know, view of the aircraft at this stage. You go backwards and you see the engines, you know, very, very reliable engines. We have seen uh, good engines on the Mirage 2000, very high serviceability, a very high mission accomplishment rate. And here we have got uh, two uh, excellent engines. Uh, with high reliability. So therefore, from front to back, if you see the capability wise, you know, the aircraft Okay. Important uh, because the numbers in Indian Air Force are unfortunately uh, at an all time low. Okay. Okay. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll continue this part uh, there, uh, uh, A. Marshal Chopra, but let me bring in AVM uh, Srivastava here as well. And there are a number of capabilities, number of uh, features uh, as far as Rafael aircraft is concerned, some of them India specific as well. So, uh, AVM Srivastava, uh, what would you want to add on to what uh, A. Marshal Chopra is saying, specifically the, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, fierce uh, fighter jet Rafale out there is? So A. Marshal has very clearly brought out what makes this aircraft very special. And I'll just add to that, 
uh, where the aircraft is special, the technology kind of technology we have, and uh, the cost of avionics in this aircraft is to the tune of about 30 percent. And if you take that cost, what it gives in that cost is something like the kind of EW suite which we have, which protects us from all kind of radiation which falls upon it, and it can. Uh, it has one active cancellation mechanism also available, spectra, which makes it do. That means the ra radar, which is uh, signals are falling on the aircraft, along with the eco, will go some more signals which are in, uh, out of sync with the signals are going there. So the enemy receiver, when it receives, it will feel as if the RCS of the aircraft is very low. As such, this aircraft is 70% composite material with radar absorbent material. This aircraft is not classified as stealth aircraft, but it is very close to that. And if you want to compare it with J-20, you'll find J-20 uh, in all the literatures which you go through, it probably has more RCS than uh, Rafale. In that mm -hmm. sense, we will not be beaten by the J-20's RCS kind of criteria. So this aircraft is something like very close to sub-stealth aircraft which can sneak into the enemy territory. That is point number one. And point number two, the kind of tactical air situation it provides to the pilot in the cockpit, there's no blind zone. The pilot can see all along. It gives the targeting cues or the firing cues, the mission parameters, and all these things and the control parameters are synthesized, available in head-up display form, in holographic kind of display. All that makes this aircraft very special to fly and very special for taking on the missions. There is one okay. more word which is very well known. It's an omni roll aircraft. When we say omni roll aircraft, let's compare it to the multi roll aircraft, the swing roll. You can swing the roll. It, in the flight, it can do other roles which are there. And in those roles, I would like to classify three which are very important for the nation at this point of time. And those are nuclear deterrent role. Everyone knows if we have nuclear weapon, to, you need a delivery platform that will not be shot down by the enemy, that can be detected by the enemy. In that sense, it brings with the same weapons a kind of nuclear deterrent to the nations who are trying to encroach upon or trying to look at you in an adverse manner, a uh, capability which makes them think 10 times, which before they would like to go into it. Then and another one is anti-ship kind of capability. If you take the mm -hmm. scene of South China Sea, it's our South China Sea, it is a very relevant and contextual capability that it brings along with it. And then in-depth strike capability. It can go deep into enemy territory, apart from being BVR, it can go deep into enemy territory if so required. And then it makes it, uh, you know, all, all, all the bases which are there uh, to be their adversaries, they become very reachable. And a dedicated okay. effort towards them can really neutralize them. I would just like to add one more point before uh, I, I take a kind of stop uh, is that along with these capabilities in the Himalayan range, it can also fly and take off from high altitude and take a cold start without compromising of the fuel capacity or the weapon capacity, which Air Marsh has already brought out. Okay. So I would say okay. in that sense, it's really contextual, very important to have it at this point of time. Definitely, its, it's, it's capabilities are pretty much contextual, be, be it how uh, we look at uh, uh, the Himalayan region or uh, towards uh, the uh, IOR or South China Sea region as well. Let me bring in uh, Manu here. Manu, specifically, if you look at uh, the way, uh, you know, the timelines uh, of, of this uh, particular uh, aircraft's delivery, uh, where do we stand in terms of what we wanted and what we have got? And also, uh, you know, there has been a lot of need being felt by Indian Air Force, and we have had a discussion on this show quite a number of times uh, about increasing its uh, strength. So therein begins uh, the, the, you know, the, the game of uh, in adding more numbers to the IAF's uh, fighter aircraft strength. You know, there has been no doubt about the capability of the aircraft, as the two air marshals have brought out very clearly. The aircraft is extremely capable. And remember, you know, Rafale procurement went through a bit of a political controversy. But that was more on process. It was never on the capability of the aircraft. The Air Force tried out a bunch of aircraft, including the Eurofighter. They tried out their 16 F-18, the modern Russian jets, and they figured that the Rafale is the best aircraft suitable for the role that the Air Force needs. So there's never been any doubt about that at all. And uh, as we know, uh, the, the, the aircraft has been very long awaited. You know, it's, it's, it's behind time, frankly. It's not behind time because uh, of production delays. It's behind time because 
the successive uh, uh, you know regimes took too much time to decide on the aircraft the air force has been waiting for an aircraft of this type for at least 15 years uh, the, the original procurement process for the rafale started in 2007 the formal procurement process and you know it's it's it's, it's, it's such a long time that the aircraft are coming in now and the numbers uh, as you know are limited you know when you talk to air force uh, officers current serving and as well as retired people they will tell you that 36 is great but it is nothing compared to the size that we need. I mean, these are great enhancements to the, uh, to the air power, but we need much larger numbers. Remember, our legacy MiG-21 fleet is almost retired now. A lot of the other MiG series, the 27s are going off, uh, you know, into retirement. And you need mm -hmm. numbers to enhance. So the Air Force's original requirement, as we all know, is 126 aircraft. So we're getting 36 now. The balance is left. Uh, they are trying to find different ways of getting it. As we've discussed before, the LCA, is going to come in in strength. Uh, we hope to see the contract getting signed this year, uh, hopefully by the end of this year for more. But aircraft of this type, the, you know, the Rafale is a type of aircraft which no one else in the region operates. We are, I think, way ahead of uh, others in terms of capability, as uh, has been brought out earlier, uh, both in air to air and air to ground roles, which are vital. And you will need more of these types. And as the selection process is on, and, you know, the fear that a lot of people see is that this will get dragged too long. We needed these aircraft yesterday. We need more of them today. And, you know, aircraft procurement isn't like uh, buying a car. It takes time. You know, you, you place an order. It takes them three years to manufacture it. Then it takes a lot of time to create an infrastructure, to train up pilots. And, uh, again, I mean, what I would like to emphasize, and I'm, I'm sure the Air Force officers, the RAD officers will agree with me, is that numbers are of great concern. And I think we will need more. And I hope the government also pushes this forward as soon as possible. Okay, definitely. Numbers are of great concern, but the ball has been set rolling and, uh, uh, you know, it seems to be becoming reality now that the first batch of uh, five Rafale fighter aircrafts are here. Let me uh, go back to um, Air Marshal uh, Chopra here. Air Marshal Chopra, whenever we talk about any fighter aircraft, its weapons carrying ability is something which makes a, you know, uh, gives it a force multiplier. And what kind of weapons can it carry? In, in case of Rafale, it is being said that uh, this particular capability is a real game changer. So how would you describe the weapons carrying capability or weapons on board uh, Rafale fighter jet? Absolutely. You know, before I talk about the weapons, I think I will briefly add on to what uh, Manu Bobby has just said. Uh, you know, the Indian Air Force's actual requirement to the government had been told for 126 aircraft in 2001. From 2001 to 2007, before the process could be st started, we lost a lot of time. In fact, in 2001, Indian Air Force had said, okay, give us just Mirage 2000, upgrade it, and we will be very happy. Uh, the Dassault company till 2006 waited, and finally uh, they said, okay, we have to close down the Mirage uh, line, and then Avi started this process. So Manu Papi is absolutely right when he says that Indian Air Force desperately needs aeroplanes. We are 12 squadrons short. Uh, we will be another 10 squadrons short in the next 8, 10 years. And uh, uh, the backlog is so much, and therefore uh, I think the government is well aware of. The Indian Air Force has been explaining to them but for some reason, uh, uh, bureaucratic uh, delays at various levels, the political, the bureaucratic and military level, I think we have uh, messed up and reached a point where we are short of Scotland. Now, we come to your question about the actual uh, weapons on this aircraft. You know, uh, you remember in after Balakot, that little air combat that we had to go through. Uh, the other side fielded the AIM-120 AMRAM. And uh, they fired five of them. Luckily, none of them uh, hit our uh, aircraft because we did some defensive maneuvering. The fact that we had to go into defensive maneuvering itself indicates that BVR was an issue for us at that uh, moment of time. Now, Meteor comes with, uh, which is a BVR missile, a much longer range, over 150 kilometers uh, range. But greater thing about Meteor is uh, it has an ISA radar on its uh, head. And the greater thing is it has got a no escape zone of 60 kilometers. Now, I must explain this. No escape zone means once you are the enemy aircraft is within 60 kilometers of uh, this uh, uh, you know, aircraft which is firing, then any maneuver or anything that aircraft would do, uh, there is a no escape zone. So Meteor is a very, very modern. Now, it has also got uh, ECCM features, electronic counter countermeasures. That means if somebody... Will try to jam the missile while it is in flight, uh, the missile will be able to defend itself electronically. So, this is a meteor, so very significant uh, 
Okay, that means the enemy aeroplanes will have to maintain at least 150 kilometers away from Rafal or have a weapon better than Meteor. Second the weapon is the Scalp. Now, Scalp is a cruise missile which has got a range of around 540 kilometers plus minus a little. So very, very mm -hmm. accurate. Most missiles, cruise missiles have an accuracy of around 3 meters at the target. Now, imagine, you know, we did a, a spice attack uh, during uh, the Balakot uh, strike. Spice had a range of around 60 kilometers, but physically when you fire, you had to go a little closer. So you had to imagine if you had a, a scalp class, a class of missile, 540 kilometers. Means from Ambala, you take off. Over Ambala, you fire a missile and hit a target in Sargoda, which has got a lot of strategic uh, targets. That is the kind of range scalp missile has got. So very, very modern, uh, you know, cruise missiles. I'm also happy that India is making BrahMos and uh, larger numbers will get um, added. And uh, BrahMos is also going to be a very, very uh, good uh, cruise missile. The third weapon that is relevant and the uh, last of the three main uh, weapons, uh, that is the hammer. Now, when the contract was being signed, we chose not to in, uh, have a hammer because we already had crystal maze and spice from Israel. So we did not want to inflate the size of the contract. So it was decided we will not order the hammer. But today, the way uh, the technical situation is on the ground, and uh, since they have hot clouds on the border, uh, there is a need to quickly have a hammer class of weapon, which is uh, has a range of around 60 kilometers. The advantage of hammer is that hammer is already fully integrated uh, uh, on the aircraft. So if the missile okay. comes, they can be bought off the shelf uh, and it is available to slap on onto the aircraft. So hammer will bring in a great capability. Uh, I have uh, some more issues which uh, I guess we will uh, talk as we go, go along in terms of the operational capability that we will get. Yeah, yes, then. Definitely. We will come to the operationalization part as well. But let me bring in AVM Srivastava first here on, on one aspect. And both you, uh, AVM Srivastava and uh, uh, A. Marshal Chopra, have spoken about some of them as in, you know, India-specific uh, uh, enhancements as far as this particular aircraft is concerned. So, a uh, bit more on that. And, and what was the need to have, uh, you know, these kind of India-specific enhancements on, on such a, uh, a wonderful fighter aircraft? See, actually, our conditions of flying, our conditions of maintenance, our conditions of you know, from where we'll take off, etc., are entirely different than what will be the French conditions. So they need to be acclimatized unless you do that. And one more thing I'd like to bring it here, which is very important from contractual perspective, that in this deal, we have been permitted to integrate, weapon integrate, our own Astra missiles, if we want to, indigenous missiles like Brahmos, NG, or Israeli missiles or Russian missiles. This freedom is normally not given by the OEM. So weapon integration is a very important part. This relieves you from the continuous and ongoing monopolistic kind of weapon purchase scenario from the OEM. This mm -hmm. no OEM wishes to get away with. This is a very important feature of the uh, contract in terms of the management as the contract management was done, which I don't think has been so highlighted in the media. This is a very important okay. perspective. So it is, this aspect, if you add, and apart from that, the kind of systems we got, awareness systems, the EW suite, and, and the hammer, which has already been mentioned by the air marshal, all that make it weapons. We actually paid. We paid a large amount of money for India-specific changes. We also paid for additional weapons. So it was a holistic contract. In that sense, as if we knew, we were crystal gazing, that we are going to face this situation. And when this aircraft arrives here, then we'll need it to be well managed, well serviced, and loaded with the weapons. Like PBL is again a very uh, important part, performance-based logistics is a very important part of the contract. That gives you in okay. the initial years, 75% combat availability of the fleet, which is going to be very crucial in case something, some other context comes up. So keep, keeping that okay. all, uh, all that in mind, but let me tell you what gives us the edge uh, mm -hmm. in this sense. There's one more thing which is very relevant to modern day war fighting, and that is, how many combat sorties we can do per day per aircraft? In that sense, it's modular design. This modular design is very, very relevant. And Air Marshal will bear with me that including the 2000, if you take an engine change, I have an engineer, aeronautical engineer for the last 46 years. I know an engine change is a massive exercise in a Russian origin aircraft. It takes a couple of days. But in this aircraft, you can do it in just eight hours. 
your aircraft is ready when it comes to time okay. round uh, turn round sir so was saying that can be done very fast so if you take all these factors into account the potency or the combat effectiveness of the aircraft goes up very high apart from the other parameters which you are already talking about and there's one more parameter Definitely. which we keep mentioning once in a while that is uh okay i think uh, you wish to move ahead so i will drop uh, yeah, it here yeah. next time when i have then no definitely about. there are various aspects to this this particular aircraft and i'm pretty sure uh, 25 minutes or 30 minutes would be a uh, uh, less time to go ahead and look into <laughs> yeah, all things yeah. but uh, the okay. potency yeah. and uh, uh, you know combat effectiveness is something which both you and uh, air marshal uh, chopra is pointing out uh, various aspects weapons as well as india specific and so let's look at now the strategic aspect of it and the operationalization part manu i'll i'll start with you in terms of how this particular aircraft now that we have it uh, can be put to good use to achieve our strategic goals and in terms of operationalizing the entire uh, you know uh, combat uh, uh, infrastructure there see uh, let me start with you know the very special relationship that we have with france You know, it's a French, it's a French aircraft. We've been buying French aircraft for the past six decades, starting in 1953, I think, with Kufani. Uh, see, India, the position it is right now, uh, the Rafale has come with a full weapons package. It was not supposed to come. You know, we we made a special request. Uh, the French Air Force supported the delivery of the aircraft. Uh, they delivered weapons in advance. This tells you that, strategically speaking, India and France are close partners. and a special procurement like this they will go out of uh, their way to help us operation as it passed so as i see it uh, you know in the coming few days we will see uh, in fact the next 3 months we uh, hope to get another batch of the aircraft in five more and i think palace will go through a round of training and simulation and you know a lot of uh, weapons integration because as we know the weapons have come in advance again a special request was made by the indian government to the french government to send something in advance and i think that's really worked out well for us and uh, you know given the scenario on the eastern front these are coming as a great capability uh, enhancement they will uh, perhaps not be used straight away you know into uh, sorties on the on, over ladakh but there's a there are a good backup to have uh, you know our cutting edge fighter right now is the mirage 2000 and uh, the reason we trust it so much is that it's a great aircraft it's shown its capability over the years i mean imagine trusting your nuclear weapons to an aircraft that's the ultimate amount of trust you have in an aircraft and that's what we've done to the mirage 2000 in the in going ahead i think the rafale will take over this uh, role in coming years so over the next few months we will see it getting uh, slowly embedded into our system into our comms into our fighter ops but we can't really expect Uh, it will like, start, you know, uh, going up to the border tomorrow. I think it will take some more time to do that. Uh, uh, by the end of next year, we hope to have delivery of all 36 aircraft. It will be two squadrons forming up, and uh, mm-hmm. at Ambala, you know, I, 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 I'm sure Air Marshal Chopra has something to add about the strategic importance of Ambala. But I can only tell you right now that Ambala is a very, very busy air base right now, uh, especially with the flying going around uh, right now on the on on other borders. And I think its importance is increased manifold by the arrival of the Rafale there. Okay, definitely, and uh, the squadron there, which you spoke about, known as uh, Golden Arrows, out there. But let me uh, bring in uh, Air Marshal Chopra for the uh, concluding comment on the operationalization part and the strategic use as well. Uh, Air Marshal Chopra. Yeah. Before I uh, come to this question, let me quickly add one or two points to uh, uh, for, to what ABM Srivastava has earlier said. Uh, among the Uh, uh, you know, India-specific modifications. Uh, he has covered most of them. Uh, you know, is the dash helmet? Uh, dash helmet is uh, one of the most expensive uh, modifications because dash helmet we have now integrated Mirage 2000 uh, MiG-29 upgrade. It is uh, also been uh, integrated into the LCA. So this is a helmet which we want commonality in the Air Force because data sharing is going to take place. Everything is going to be displayed on the head-up display. There is also Toad decoy, which uh, briefly uh, ABM Srivastava mentioned, which is a uh, very very important thing, and that decoy uh, will give an impression that the aeroplane is elsewhere, and the uh, enemy aircraft will be trying to target uh, the decoy instead of the aircraft. So that's uh, okay. another. Then of course we have got the maintenance package related to two air bases, etc. Now, uh, as uh, uh, Manu Pabu Pabi has just uh, mentioned. that uh, you know normally when an aeroplane comes it takes some time to operationalize when we brought the mirai 2000 take us 5 6 months of a uh, lot of activities of course in those days in the contract that time we did not have the weapons arriving in advance so that's a big advantage uh, but there is a need to compress these time frames and actually it is possible today to compress these time frames i will explain to you why 
today the kind of simulation that is available you know these boys who have gone for training to uh, france they have done all kinds of combat missions i either on in the air or on simulator you know mm-hmm. all the weapons you won't believe it in my entire service career i never had to fire the 530d uh, you know bbr missile but they are very expensive weapons you just don't uh, every pilot doesn't get a chance to fire these weapons so most of it is practiced on simulator so all these exercises would have been done on simulator the guys are already trained for air to air refueling they have actually done it during this ferry so the time it is possible today with the weapons physically available or electronic warfare suits uh, on board with the electronic warfare uh, you know programming equipment on on the ground it is possible to swing this time to one to two months now what else is required integrating with the other forces you are not going to fly the rafale alone there will be a formation you will fly with uh, other aircraft so uh, they, you will have to do some dissimilar air combat practice with the other uh, you know fleets your radar controllers have get uh, used to your new te- uh, tactics and new terms that you would have used uh, the, the ground environment has to adjust uh, in india because you till now you were in france uh, the french are also going to be there who will help in quickly getting the maintenance uh, uh, side uh, you know uh, operational so there is going to be a uh, you know compressing of times my personal gut feeling is that technically today it is possible to compress this time uh, to one or two months and okay. if push push up the aeroplanes are ready to launch tomorrow because uh, if the nation demands so uh, the, the aircraft will uh, physically be used yeah Okay. Okay. Thank you so much out there, uh, Air Marshal uh, Anil Chopra, ABM Shrivastava, and Manu Pabbi for sharing your views uh, with us on this particular aspect. So, so there it is. All the details about the twin uh, engine uh, jet.